All right, where we at with it, man? Um, episode eleven of the Flame series. Big up to everybody in the UGC, the underground community. It's brought to y'all by Black Horse and Promotions. Everybody in the UGC, click man. Shout out to y'all. Make sure when y'all get an opportunity to go to the channels tab and check out the content. You know, if y'all new, if, you, if you're a newbie and you're checking out this content for the first time, you know, see if you like it, subscribe, and then hit the bell to go with it. But we got uh, the flame of fame and flame of shame like we always do. Like I said, episode 11. And we got, uh, I got the actual sources in the, in the description and I will, let me see if I can drop it in the live chat. I'm going to drop the source to the topics we're going to be speaking on today. Okay, I think that first one. I hope that's it. But I got to be sure that that's the right link. So I'll get it together in a second. Um, the homies will be on in a few. Y'all know them, the usuals. You got Charles, you got Rocket, you got Angel. Red Glove, One Two Kid, you know my usuals. You know Tony Views comes through every so often. He's been part of this Flame series. But we're gonna get right to it, man, because we told y'all before we was gonna give y'all that vital work. You know, we, we, it's been a minute, so uh, I think uh, we go. We gonna um, let me get to it. There we go. Vada or nada. This is a good topic to cook on. There was a uh, a good 20 minute video uploaded by IFL TV and they captured a lot of the unseen footage, behind the scenes footage from Gerald Miller, Gerald Big Baby Miller, his fight build up with AJ and his biggest moment to prove that he is the best heavyweight in the world. The guy messed that whole opportunity up by doing some of the most explosive PEDs known to mankind. And this was, this guy really let down a lot of people. You know, you can say he let down the culture. He let down New York. I mean, keep it real. You know, he's called say he let y'all down. It's kind of embarrassing, you know. Uh, he let down people that looked up to him. He let down, his, you know, all his fans. Because, uh, you know, Jerry Miller was one of them guys for all of these PEDs and stuff cracked off. He was one of them guys that uh, he knew how to sell a fight. We know he threw a whole lot of punches per round. He, I mean, this guy led in the heavyweight divisions for as far as uh, most punches thrown in the fight, you know, per round. We say like some around 60 some punches per round or whatnot. So um, then Vada, that Vada work came around. And then we learned that um, that's why somebody can be 300 some pounds and throw more than people literal, you know, more smaller than them with the ease. So. And the thing about it is uh, the flame of fame I'm giving to Eddie Hearn. I don't think the guy has gotten enough credit when it has when it comes to what he's contributed to the sport of boxing. Um, even Gerald Miller himself has stated that he's a good businessman, and even after he got popped dirty, you know, and, and um, you know, embarrassed himself, he even you know came back, uh, you know, low key trying to you know. Not, I'm not saying begging his way back to the, to to uh, match room to zone, but basically said you know. I want to come back home, you know, and one of the biggest things y'all know on this side, we are rooted in integrity. And for the most part, what I've seen with Eddie Hearn, you know, he's dealing with it. He, he, he comes off as somebody who deals with integrity as well. And there's been times where people will try to, you know, question his integrity and he'll pull out receipts. Like he, he don't like that shit, you know. I'm, there's a lot of people like that, you know. They move with integrity and you try to come at them sideways like, like they're not being truthful, they're going to pull out receipts. 
And then those people that be living a lie start getting, they get offended and shit. But you got to show what the real truth is. They want to get offended and say, oh, you being too harsh. No. Truth truth is, nigga, it's some, it's some G shit. You bring that, when you're doing that truth work, it's some, old, it's some real G shit. You know? But it was a good relationship they had, Gerald Miller and Eddie Hearn. And Gerald Miller, like, with all that, all that Eddie Hearn had done for the dude, this is how you pay the man back? You know, it, like, some some people, man, some individuals, and we all human, so we make mistakes. Jerry Miller made a terrible mistake, and you will be forever stamped in history for the amount of PEDs you did, man. And um, all it did was raise that Vada work, that Vada brand to the, you know, to the tip top. Because they just do good work. And their whole agenda is to clean up the sport. You know? This is why the clean athletes get the biggest salutes and praise and utmost credit on this side. You know? Some of y'all, I mean, some, some people would just, you know, fan, be a fan of anything. You know? They don't care if they juiced up anything, you know? You know, when I see guys on a consistent basis, they use Vada testing. They paying for it for them to get tested and their opponent. And they willing to do it for a long period of time. And they ain't got a track record of ducking, ducking testing or popping dirty and whoop de whoop. Like, you know, I care about fighters like that. Make it a clean sport. You know, Vada or not. So I see a lot of people that, you know, a lot of these fighters, they out here pumping iron during this COVID-19 and stuff. You know, I'm like, okay. Mm-hmm. You know, Vada had to have a little, you know, y'all got a little vacation because uh, they put Vada in the bleachers for a little bit. Then all y'all amped up on social media calling everybody out. I'm paying attention. Like, mm-hmm. Yep. That's, that's a little extra, too. That's new. Oh. Matter of fact, your shoulders is, is all the way bulked up in that white beater. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Vada, you going to go over there? or uh, Hopefully they watching all y'all, too. Hopefully all the Vada associates is watching every single uh, fool out here that's got all this extra energy calling out 90 people in their division and in out of division. Yeah, Vada, watch all of them because they ready for everything. They, they want all the smoke, so. The ones that's been wanting more smoke than usual, I'm watching them. The hell out of them. Let me get to the chat. What's up, Charles? First in the building. Boxman. Yeah, man. He's scared of kangaroo. I'll sleep with kangaroo. This nigga talking about I'll run. Roger Goodell, stupid ass. Oh, I don't know. I'm going to drop the link in a minute, so you can cook on that. I only cook on what I know. What I research. What I know. He said, Rocket Dog, he the hell no, you don't want that rock, that uh, action with that uh, kangaroo. Sporting advantage. But peace to no name Rose. I'll be missing with no name Rose now on here. Shout out to no name Rose. Been a minute. Box of finesse. Go down the list real quick, and then I'll get the link out to the homies. But yeah, as I'm going down the list, by, uh, Flame of Shame, Jerry Miller. You know, you know when, when somebody's that loyal to you, man, giving you opportunities, getting you money, you're able to provide for your families and stuff like that. Why would you? Why would you do that? Like he, he makes us look bad, and I'm talking about for the culture. Like, he, he makes us look bad. You know, it's bad enough we didn't have some black promoters and managers that have robbed other black fighters. But then you got a white fighter, a white promoter who's actually trying to do the right thing and be a good businessman. And here you go over here and repay the man by doing the GW 1516. What was you doing, bro? What type of stuff? Like, that's not loyalty, man. I will never betray. I don't give a damn if somebody's a different color. If they doing me, doing right by me, we good. You know, some of y'all just be in too deep with this skin shit. This shit be stupid. You know, but that was embarrassing to, to Eddie Hearn, man. It was embarrassing. It was 
It was embarrassing to the sport. It was embarrassing on so many different levels. So many. You know, and we flamed the shit immediately. Let me go uh, drop this link. If I if it kicks me out, then it is what it is. I'll be right back. All right. Had to make that drop off, B. Had to make the drop off, B. She said the bronze plumber. Yeah, this guy comes every now and then. What's up, man? Happy Sunday. Yeah, what's going on? Um, what else out here? Hey, um, AJ catching some heat out here, man. Just, just low key. AJ catching some heat. Hey, you know what? Let me give it another flame of fame. This is to a channel. Shout out to Sporting. I think I've done this already. Sporting Icons, man. I'm a fan of the channel. Uh, it's my favorite UK channel. Um, this guy always is honest. He's straightforward. He gets right to the point. And I like the fact that I'm seeing, the, you know, in the midst of all of this stuff that's been going on with this racial tension and stuff out here in America, I like that there's a lot of people that's opposite of the, of the race that's getting oppressed that are actually speaking up and not being silent. I like that. You know what I'm saying? And somebody like Sporting Icons, he didn't got nothing to do with that because he's not even in America. And he ain't got to really speak on none of that when it comes to what's going on and all that. But the mere fact that he is and giving his opinion, his perspective, and I appreciate that, bro. I do. You know, I, I really do appreciate it. I, I, like I, I said yesterday, I appreciate Lou DeBella. You know, like we, we, we feel that. For the ones that go through that struggle and got to deal with Something that's more than what somebody else got to deal with right now. We appreciate that, and we see that, and that means a lot, you know. And I'm gonna say this though: a lot of the ones that stay and stuck on that racial supremacy and whatever color you are, you're gonna find out, man. Pretty soon, you're gonna be in the minority. You're gonna be in the minority. So you ain't gotta change. Keep doing what you're doing. Keep being hateful. Keep thinking it's just all about you and your skin and all of that. Okay. Trust me. Soon enough, you're going to be in the minority. You know? So, you can't stop what's already happened. But uh, shout out to everybody that's in the live chat. Um, shout out to that playback game. Hey, <laughs> shout out to Nick Harmer. He was like, uh, was that Nick Harmer? He said, uh, catch up game. <laughs> Shout out to the catch up gang too. Shout out to the ones that's catching up. That's catching up. Shout out to the ones catching up. You know what I mean? And speaking of that, shout out to the ones in the background right now in the bushes looking ass. Shout out to y'all. Hit the like button. Show some love if you're here. And if you take any content, quote your source. Put me in your description box. Thank you. No further questions. We got a uh, comb in the headpiece. He said, what's up, bro? Big up to you. Box of Finesse says, before COVID, Eddie been chucking big bread, trying to make the fight happen. The fights happen. It is declining lifetime opportunities. Offers only come across once in a blue moon. Man, talk your shit, bro. Box of Finesse. Already know. But you know what? A lot of people don't want to give him credit for that. Because he may not meet the complexion for the connection or for the for the promo or whatever. But get it here. You know what I'm saying? You'll get it here. You know, some people can only be half real when it's they'll limit it to their color though. They'll be real until they gotta get credit to the other skin tone. They'll be like, ah, oh, whatever. You know, whatever. Red Glove, RGM. Shout out to Red Glove. One of the illest content creators on the planet. Shout out to RGM and One Two Kid. Some of the two, some of the two of the illest motherfuckers on this shit. 
<laughs> See how I bring them out. <laughs> Tell it to just the trouble, man. My favorite troll, dog. He ain't earned no rent yet, but he were he trying. He trying though. Here we back. Yeah, but shout out to the background. Hey, man, show some love. Hit the like button. Man, that's sad though. Um, you know what you were saying, boxer finesse. Like some of them guys ain't gonna never get them opportunities again. You know, they're not gonna get them opportunities again. And also brought up, I I'm using Gerald Miller also as a flame of shame for an example that I want to make. That uh, not just for him and and his you know city. It's more like the symbol of uh, these American fighters, man. We got to keep it real. American fighters just been messing up big moments, big opportunities, man, consistently. And it's shameful, man. They get the American heavyweight champs gets the flame of shame. Man. You know? That was the, really the down effect right there. Jerry Miller Pop with all of that he, that he had in the system. It was a downhill from there. Everybody was losing. It was like, yep, get up out of here. You know, the sad thing about it, he still got his own, but <laughs> dirty. From that dirty, dirty. That's what y'all need to make him move to the dirty south. Get your ass out of East Coast. You go, you going to the dirty, dirty. That dirty, dirty. I'm just playing. He need to just, hey, look, you'll be forgiven, Joe Miller. Just get on Vada and stay in the Vada CBP. Forever. Nigga. Forever, ever. Don't get out. Remain and maintain in that vital work. Some people coming in. What's up, Martin? What's going on, man? He says, Sport.com broke it down. There was whole 10 minutes of the clips instead of two minutes based on two minutes of AJ clips. People hating on AJ. No, I pointed out what I disliked about it. Um, you know, and I'm going to leave that on episode 10. If y'all want to know my perspective on it, I left that on episode 10. So that ain't, I'm not going to even um, waste episode 11 talking about that or getting too deep into that. So, but, uh, you know, and I, and that's the thing about me. I don't have to agree a hundred percent on everything that uh, a channel might say, or anyone might say, whether it be AJ Wilder, a channel here on YouTube or whatever. But um the main thing is just integrity. You know what I mean? Just just integrity. And um that guy has shown that. Sport and Icons has shown that. And for the most part, shit. That's the matter of fact, that's the only channel that I'm I'm a joint member on. I haven't joined no other channel. I, I joined that one though. So I mean the other ones it doesn't interest me, like Keith Thurman said. It doesn't interest me. It's not yet. You know, maybe down the line. But uh, it got to be some really good content, man, for me to be there and really be supportive like that. Because over time, you realize, like, uh, okay. Like, oh, it's cool. It's, uh, okay. It'd be like that sometimes. But then there'd be the other times, like, oh, okay. Refreshing. And authentic stuff. Like, you can just tell original, real deal content as opposed to some remix, you know, some remix. You, you can tell remix content, you know, regurgitated content. You're like, ah, okay. All right. All right. We should have best. All right. See you, buddy. Good luck. He says, imagine what Miller would have looked like in the ring if he made it to the fight. I was listening to what Eddie Hearn was talking about that. And he was just like, uh, I fell for him. I'm just like, I, I, we said that. You know, we, we flamed Joe Miller immediately. You know, literally about an hour after the source dropped. I was on it. I'm like, what the? What is this? I had to research while doing the live stream what that drug was. I said, what the hell is a G Dub 1516? I'm like, this man doing some extraordinary stuff, man. And the stuff he was doing. It was like Joe Miller, and he do the dude said it, and I pointed this out. You know, even though it's just something he said, he was he was just amped up. 
and you stuff talking about I'm gonna kill this motherfucker. I'm like, whoa, you amped up. But then after he popped dirty, I look back at that. I'm like, oh, he meant that shit because the stuff he was doing, shit, he would have been so strong in there, man. A jab would have probably sat him down. Edge would have been looking at this man like, like how um, Paulo Creed was looking at a. Uh, What's that Russian dude name? Whatever he is. Let's break you. Looking ass. Red Gloves said, episode 10 had a lot of topics. Even talked about fighting kangaroos. Yeah, man. Y'all check that out. If y'all ain't got nothing else y'all got to do, you know what I'm saying? You got time. We try to get these hours for y'all, man. Just, just listen to some, some real boxing talk, man. Some real talk, life talk, inspiration talk, comedy talk, animal talk, food talk, all talk. But it's UDC work. You know, yeah, thank you, Martin Drago. You know what I mean? Motherfucker would have been strong like Drago in there, Jerry Miller. He would have been the Nag the Nagro Drago, nigga, the Nagro Drago, Negro Drago ass. He would have been, he, hey, the, hey, I think anybody from America would have had a good chance versus AJ that night. And that's my opinion because I just felt like phew, that was just the, the right night to catch AJ. You know, he was first fight in America. You know, he was nervous, a lot of pressure, all of that. Uh, he was trying to, and he, it worked though. But we are, I seen what the zone was doing. It was like, okay, this is AJ's moment to really, for us to really, for the zone to really get that American market and that that exposure for the zone with AJ. And uh, he ended up losing, but it didn't even backfire. It even worked out better. The fact that he lost which was astonishing to me. I was like, this is some extraordinary stuff. And we was talking about, like, if this man win the rematch, man, y'all got to shut up. <laughs> you got to shut it the fuck up because you, you can't hate on the great. You can't hate greatness, man. Some of y'all do. I don't. I don't hate greatness. I admire it. I applaud it. It inspires me when I see greatness. You know? That's why I ate Crow and I gave it up to Jamel Charlo. I was like, you know what? That's some great stuff, man. Um, it wasn't good. It wasn't great that they had a Gatorade bottle in, in the corner. So we're going to leave that for a different video. But the dude fought his way and he got the KO. So, hey, lines on and all that. Sporting Fan says, that's the truth. I have uploaded old VHS fights. Some dude tried to report me for using my original video. He never credited. Blame ass, no creativity, trying to take stolen goods. Yeah, that's sad. That's sad, man. There's a lot of people looting right now. I guess there's a lot of looting going on, man. Damn. Shit. He said, can we not forget Miller's emotional speech after he got caught red-handed? No sympathy for motions. I know, man. Like I said, if you want to be forgiven, hey, Vada or Nada. Vada or Nada, Joe Miller. That's all I can tell you. Then you'll be forgiven. Because... Of the simple fact, you did a whole lot of talking, bro. It was a whole lot of talking. And uh, when it came down to it, you must have been scared. You must have been scared you was going to lose. You was, gonna, you was scared you was going to get embarrassed on American soil, on AJ's American debut. You were scared. So he was like, mm, yeah. He was like, uh, hey, uh, what's the name of that new shit you got? Oh, that's that G-Dub 15. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, UPS, Air, FedEx, overnight, whatever you need to do. Get that to me. Care package, get it. Let me get it. You know, he had it all. Pharmaceutical promotions. Toby says, in my opinion, at least Miller testing dirty gave Andy Ruiz a chance to shine even though he never made the best of it. People do respect him as a good fighter now. And, and that's the thing about it, Toby. Like, I'm glad you pointed that out because it was Gerald Miller's mistake. His cheating ass is what got Andy Ruiz, made him a freaking um, fashion over, Nova uh, model and shit. The first fat, fat <laughs> oh, shit, let me get off that, man. Let me get off that shit. But yeah, man, Andy Ruiz wasn't even supposed to be as famous. I'm not hating on him, but really, for real, Andy Ruiz was not supposed, supposed to be signed 
or, or training with Eddie, Eddie Reynoso right now. That's not supposed to happen. That was not even supposed to be. If he did not beat AJ, Reynoso and Canelo wouldn't even be considering his fat ass going over there. But because Joe Miller fucked up, congratulations. You know, all you can eat buffets for the rest of your life. You got that cake. Literally. And in the bank. The Gatorade got it done. You know what I mean? Cali, we got to do better. That's my home. But we got to do better. Uh, you know, CSAC. We got we to do much better. Just be more thorough with our rules. Integrity. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you pointed out, and they were like, you want to get mad. They just start want to take stuff down. Y'all see how they do. Y'all see how they do. Yeah, if they want to. Right, Charles. Thank you for pointing that out. The G-Dub could have killed him, too. This man was trying to give himself cancer. I'm like, bro, what is... Love yourself. Like, you, you don't love yourself? You, you just... It's not that serious, man. It's not that serious. Like, you know, I, I get it, man. It's a brutal sport, and you really want to win, and you want to, you know, you want to be great. But you got to earn it, man. Hard work, dedication. Right? A lot of guys preach it, but they don't really live it. Put in that work, man. You can pump the iron without, you know, putting the needle in you first. You know what I'm saying? You got to use that, man. So, we wanted it to be mandatory by the, for every sanction of body. Right. All them heavyweights. American heavyweights is flame and shame, damn it. Just, just being real. They just, they, Joe Miller was a symbol of a lot of them that's trying to cheat, cut corners, right? Want to eat cheeseburgers and do PEDs and win, and win fights and talk shit on camera. Just saying, dog. Then you got other dudes that don't even hardly want to work out and they get knocked out by somebody named Hellenius. Hellenius. Even though he's from Poland, but he, you know, his his lazy fat ass came out to America with that energy. Andy Ruiz in the rematch. First motherfucker in history to weigh in with a tank top. Like, oh no, you gonna lose. You lose. You're done. We cooked on that immediately. We knew he was gonna be lose the fight right after the weigh in. We knew a little bit before that, but it was confirmed. Okay, go back and look. It was confirmed the dude was going to lose when he weighed in with the tank top. I was like, yeah, it's a wrap. It's going to, the belts is going back to the UK. Get the belts out of this snicker, twinkie, goddamn mashed potato and gravy eating ass dude. Get the belts off of him. He's a disgrace. Get him out. You know, not representing in the right way. Then you want to brag about, oh, I took all these punches. I did all right. Look how I did. If you don't get your ass off the podium and get in the fucking, get out. Exit. You know what I mean? You embarrassed everybody. Get out. You, know I mean? you went to Saudi Arabia with that shit? You fucking like that shit? Some of y'all do, though. Some of y'all probably mad right the fuck now. Right now. Nah, but but be on some real shit. The message in LA was was hot, bro. <laughs> you better go 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 on if you don't believe me. Go on Andy Ruiz's uh, IG, okay. And look at the post when he was asking for um, the third fight with AJ. Okay, just go look. Background, y'all. Background niggas, check it out. Don't take my word for it. Just go go check. Pull up the receipt. The message was hot. It was like, you ain't ready for no third fight. Take the shit serious. Your fat, your fat ass ain't stopped modeling so much. Whoop -de -whoop. They was cooking him. He said, Nordic Nightmare sounds better. Yeah, you got to use the nickname to make it sound better. Fucking, you know. Whatever happened to that one guy that came on telling me that uh, Konaki could beat AJ? He ain't never came back after that. 
it was a it was, nigga abort abort <laughs> he said surprised he didn't fight the tech top yeah me too me too there's all kind of shit jiggling around that ring man like damn does y'all like this shit <laughs> oh man but hey man um 2019 gave us a whole list of jokes, man. That's why we started this. Hey, man, this movement was inspired by a lot. Just tell you that. By a whole lot. Don't blame me. Blame God. Uh, Box for that says, Ruiz took all the shine from Baby. Now everybody knows Ruiz. Miller hit rock bottom of the shit pile. He's irrelevant. Yeah, ain't that some shit? One fat man drop, one fat man rolls. Like, Dzam. The fat black drop, and the fat black skin rose up to the top, to the crop, and then got nigga dropped off the, <laughs> dropped off his championship status immediately. Didn't even defend. Nigga couldn't pull out of the buffet. Like damn, you know, in my opinion, him and Mauricio was 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 eating. You know, it was them. Even though that's a different sanction about it. But you know, Mauricio always getting involved in somebody else's business. Like, bro, can you stop donating belts to people? You don't even, what's that nigga most dead? You don't even know me. Why are you giving me a belt? <laughs> Thank you, but dog, why? Why is you rewarding me, bro? We're not even on the same, we ain't from the same hood or nothing. What is you doing? Ain't you the enemy? This nigga in the, giving the enemies and shit. Belts. I'm ass. I can't stand up. The debris show. Charles bragging about how he made money. Yeah, he did. Charles called it. I didn't call anything. I didn't give a shit about that fight. Shit. Everybody that had ducked AJ, you know, all of them dudes was disgraceful. All them, none of them American heavyweights were stepping up. Except for, for Ruiz. Jerry Miller fucked up and then Ruiz stepped up. And I and I gave Ruiz credit because he was clean. Okay. So big despite me cooking, you know, Ruiz, I ain't heard about him failing no no uh P D test. You know, uh and he was clean in there. He he stopped AJ. He just put them hands on him. He got the credit. Then AJ put his hands on him in a rematch, and he got credit. Some of y'all was mad about shit. We was just laughing. We told y'all it was going to happen. So I told y'all. Battle of the Buffet? Nah, I, I mean, yeah, I don't know who would win that. That's what, hey, if, if Joe Miller can't leave the PDs alone, and if Ruiz can't stop eating so damn much, then look, the zone need to just start a damn eating league, right? And kick it off with Gerald Fat Big Baby Miller versus Andy Ruiz. A eat off. You know, you see who could who can go the longest is eat, 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 eat. There's so much damn food on the table, they just eat everything there. And whoever slow down and, and, and quit first, lose. You know. I don't really know who will win that. You know, Mauricio beat all of them, beat everybody. You know what I'm saying? And God now. Yeah, he got washed, bro. That was, that was what was so pathetic about it was. Wouldn't even, he got, man. Not only is you in there looking like, I don't know what that fool looked like, man. It's just like, like a bunch of, you know, fucking clumped up. Marshmallows melted on the sidewalk. Like, who did you? This <laughs> nigga. <laughs> All right, Kong, you have me cracking up laughing. He said uh, in the PBC interview, he said, Did y'all see how soggy Eddie Ruiz was looking? <laughs> Under the lights, them hot ass lights, y'all in there cooking Ruiz, man. Man over there melting, bro. Looking like a melted marshmallow and shit. Yeah, damn. Don't ever put um Andy Ruiz under them lights like that, man. This man over here, Melvin on camera. PBC, <laughs> PBC marshmallow, last thing. All right, let me get off that. 
look it up. But why would fires, fighters hire nutritionists and SNC coaches, church condition coaches? If all you had to do was eat cheeseburgers, <laughs> like Miller said, LOL, but he forgot to say all the PEDs. One more shot promotions. Yeah. Just let me back. Let me back home, Eddie. You know I want to come back home. And then he'll get in the interview with somebody else. Man, Eddie's a snake, man. Eddie, Eddie, Eddie's a snake. And you see, see Eddie? Eddie, he's a good business, man. I just want to come back home. Nigga, leave the PEDs alone. Shit. Fucked up. What was he supposed to get? Like six million, six, seven million, something like that. Fucked up everything. Damn. We wanted you to win. We was rooting for you, man. You you could have listen, you know how big that would have been for Gerald Miller if he would have beat AJ in his American debut. What that would have done for the culture, you know. All of that. So for the ones that's already all need somebody black to just win every time or whatever. Like that would have ignited, ignited the culture though. It would have ignited New York. He would have been known as the one to give AJ his first loss. But we had to find out he was on everything in the pharmacy, bro. And, and you know, you got exposed because you was talking shit about him, testosterone exemptions and whoop-de-whoop. And this guy used Vitatestin in every fight. And you was complaining like, I don't want Vitatestin. It's like having another wife following you around. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Yeah, we know why you don't want to be followed around. We know why you don't want to put your whereabouts, bruh. Now we know. We understand clear. So, you know. This nigga like, have no fear. My PEDs is here. Combs says, uh, guy you stopped most early beat you with pretty much his left hand. Yep. Got beat by a left hand. I seen a little smirk on AJ face in that way in. Like this nigga came in here with a tank top on. I'm about to beat his ass. He's like, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna just um He's like, I'm gonna make this nigga sweat. I'm gonna make you sweat top. Like, fuck knocking this nigga out. I'm about to box the shit off this nigga. Sporting event says Kanaki looked great until he got punched. Nah, he didn't look great at all. In that second fight. Yeah, Eden League. Fuck it. I'm saying, put it on the zone, and that'll start it off. And then the rest of them just be irrelevant niggas that's making their name and trying to call out. They be trying to call out Cloud Chase, Jim Miller, and Andy Ruiz. Can you imagine that? You know, why are you ducking me, Jim Miller? You know, I have a record for cheeseburgers in my city. You don't want any with me. Calling Jim Miller out. You know what I'm saying? And people got to get in between them and try to, like, nah, you're not here to fight. You're here to eat. So save that energy. You're going to need it. Just be in training camp. Be stupid shit. Might as well, though. These lazy-ass American niggas, they ain't doing shit. Kanaki has no deal. Kanaki is trash. He sucks. When I seen him go to distance with Areola, and that dude tried to tell me Kanaki could beat AJ, I said, man, eject. <laughs> I had to eject that nigga that day. I was like, bro. I don't have time for this dumb shit. <laughs> no dumb shit promotions. What's up, Angel? Yo, what's good, man? Oh, we at episode 11? What do? We 11 already, man. Damn, that's crazy. Uh, that ain't going to happen. We done made it to 11. We done we made it to 11. We in the 11th hour? It's the 11th month? No, we not. But not we not there, man. But we don't Welcome, Charles. Fucking world. What up, though? Charles, Charles. What's up, man? You got any fireworks left? Charles, motherfucker. Oh, I, I, I got a gang of them shits left. Pop them, nigga. Put them on camera. <laughs> nah, you won't be able to Turn see the colors, nigga. nigga. Huh? You won't be see, you won't be able to see the colors, nigga. You'll hear the noise. Oh, okay. You got them kind of, okay. Some firecrackers, yeah. nigga. You ain't no works. Fire yeah, I got works. No, I got works. Oh. Um, shit that shoot shit that shoot off in the air go boom. Hey, do y'all think that uh, that's a good idea for Andy Ruiz and Joe Miller to be the first one to debut on the zone, the Eaton League? <laughs> I ain't paying to see that shit. I mean, the zone. Just pay your regular the zone membership. I wouldn't even watch the shit. I'll watch it. Hope one of them roast. That's sick. content. That's content, nigga. <laughs> yep. Watch two two fat motherfuckers throw up from eating. 
Show them niggas eating in slow motion and shit. <laughs> Look at the technique. <laughs> <laughs> Don't sweat the technique. Look how he curls the hot dog. What the hell are they eating? It, everything on the table. And whoever whoever stopped, you know, whoever can't take no more, lose. My money's on Ruiz, but I wouldn't watch that shit. Yeah, I don't know who will win because Jerry Miller is like king of burgers, so just depends on what they're eating. If it's pizza, I think uh, Ruiz will win flat out. <laughs> I think Ruiz will eat anything. That nigga's a hoover. Ruiz is <laughs> like a big piece of uh, dough, you know what I'm saying? That's why he's um like looked like that Majin Buu dude. Man. You know what I mean? Box of Vanessa says taco versus quadruple cheeseburger. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And do it on Cinco de Mayo. That'll be huge. That means uh Randy Ruiz will be A side, so you gotta do a single de Mayo. Eat the eating league, eat off, heavyweight eat off, nigga. Word up. Give me my credit. Give me my percentage. Just give me 20%. You still my shit, just on Eddie. Give me my 20%. But it'll work. It'll sell. You didn't done them YouTube niggas, so whatever. Well, he said, by the way, Kanaki, Ruiz, Wilder have something in common and all are at the top. Um, they got a loss. They both got losses. They both got beat by. They both got stopped. No, Ruiz didn't get stopped. They have something in common and they're all at the top. And all are at the top. What do you mean, sporting events? I'm sitting here overthinking the shit. Oh, I'll drop it for you, Tony. Yeah, I'll drop the link for Tony. Oh, shit. All right, there you go. So I gave the flame of fame to uh, Eddie Hearn. Um, I fell for him, man. He, he got embarrassed, man. Jerry Miller let him down. He really liked Jerry Miller. And uh, out of everything that Joe, uh, that Eddie Hearn did for him, he paid him back by uh, setting a record in the PED department. Stupid uh, kids. Nigga was injecting shit that could kill his ass. Which I think is was calling him Walgreens. Fucking. Um, one of them. One of them in the chat was like pharmaceutical promotions and all of that. <laughs> Somebody said he shot all the motherfucking. Right aid in them and shit. Niggas was roasting the shit out of them. Yeah, man. We clicked on that for about two weeks straight. Non-stop. Hey, you kept trying to put him on New York like, yo, Black, he a visitor, man. Yeah, yeah. I'm about to ask you, nigga. So how you still feel about that, man? Nah, I Is don't feel still... like shit, nigga. Can <laughs> can I, I told you can that nigga's a visitor. <laughs> he ain't from here. That nigga from Jamaica. Nah, so shit, that's Iron Kong people. He born and raised, bro. He, shit. Not born and raised here. Santos, you already know that. He ain't born in... Oh, this nigga got the damn cat again. I mean, shit, man. You know, I mean, he was trying to make, make shit to make him look like this. Eventually, he gonna look like that. That's how much he gonna look like that when he 80. Okay? Damn. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He gonna have all kind of scoliosis and ratatosis and catatosis and all kinds of meiosis and shit. So it's gonna wrinkle. It's gonna wrinkle him up. Like his face looking all sucked in. Bro, that cat right there already looked like Cal Naki. Oh, Cal Naki, <laughs> damn, damn man, he's out. Yeah, Cal Naki. I, I, I have hated Cal Naki for so fucking long, and I was so happy when he got knocked out. So happy. Tony, review. Damn. Do you know somebody came on our live stream one time and said that Cal Naki will beat AJ? This is before he lost to uh, Nordic Nightmare Helenius. But well, he was like, swore, he was trying to debate me, talking about uh, Kalnaki beats AJ. I said, I had ejected nigga. I was like, bro, get this shit. Get, this, get up out of here. Let me tell you something. Kalnaki wouldn't even have beat Charles Martin if it would have been 12 rounds. He was getting his ass slumped up towards the end of that fight. With who? Against Hellenius? No, 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 no. So Kalnaki fought Charles Martin, and he was getting fucked up towards the end of the fight by Martin. Mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Shit, I know a loss was coming when he Martin, like Martin did, with fucking Martin Ariola. Come on, kind of late, but yeah, that Ariola work. I was like, oh, that God. Ariola fight that sold me. I was like, yeah, he loses soon. That's why when he fought Hellenius, I was like, I'm putting bread on this shit. And he was the fucking a super underdog. I was like, oh yeah, 
I'm I putting really right hype that man though. I mean, I get, I get it. You have a following, but you know a nigga is trash like that, man. Get the fuck out of here, bro. I blame hey. fighters like him on Tyson Fury. You ever notice ever since Tyson Fury beat Klitschko, it's just been nothing but fat dudes coming into boxing. <laughs> Damn. Oh shit. But Tyson Fury wasn't that bad though. Yo, but the whole time he's like, you got beat by a fat man. That's all he was yelling the whole fucking time. Now you got Ruiz. Now you got Big Baby. You got Kaldaki. Like, all these motherfuckers fat. Stavern. Yeah, Flaming Shame go to a lot of these, old, you know, overweight ass heavyweight, American heavyweights, man. It's pathetic. You, do, okay, man. Yeah, you, you said Stavern. Get that. That dude was like, what? <laughs> Two. And he's he not even so tall. Yeah, you're not exactly. even tall. That neither, is, just, neither is Ruiz. They just round. Like, this is just some fat dudes. <laughs> Niggas, it's fucking linemen. B-ball shape and shit. Like, I niggas, mean, man. well, you know, well, I'm glad that you said linemen, Charles D, because that's where most of them, in fact, came from, you know, other other sports. You know what I'm saying? They didn't intend to uh, box as a career, you know, if you will. You know, they was trying to make it pros, i.e. Wilder, even Ruiz. I think Ruiz played football for a minute. Uh, did he not in high school? Um, and so are so are many other heavyweight boxers. I mean, you know, they get injured and then they, you know, well, let me try my hand at uh boxing. You know, I mean, that's that, nah. that's a, that, that, that's the thing that started pretty much. <laughs> I mean, Brazil Yo. played football, he ain't fat. Oh, well, he's a oh, um, he's been boxing since he was a kid. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's funny, box for this. <laughs> Hell, put his head on Eddie Hearn's shoulder. But you get your shoulder, get up off me. You try to, you try to kill my cash cow. You know, in most, you know, you? most cases, though, a lot, a lot of these heavyweight dudes, they come from other sports, man, for real. Like a lot, a lot, a lot of them, these, or, or especially these hype jobs, right? Yeah, because yeah. um, what's his face is in the UFC. We used to play with the Panthers for, uh, yeah. goddamn it, Hardy, the nigga who tried to bribe his, bribe his girl and shit for that little assault shit, so I got kicked out the goddamn league. But, you know, the NFL is the reason why we don't see a lot of American heavyweights anymore. They all go to other sports. They don't go to boxing no more. Man, shit. It's, it's a hard sport, man. Yeah, man, shit. Who wants to get punched in the face? Especially if you, it's a hard sport. Especially if you was already in the league making good money. Now you got to get punched in the face for a living? That's a hell of a like transition. I seen Maybe it firsthand. Yo, I seen saying, niggas leave football you. when I was coming up. I seen niggas leave football and go into basketball. So I know why niggas, why a lot of niggas is good at basketball. They were trying to get away from that football work. Shit, I, I, one of our running backs got hit one time. He got hit one good time in the game. That nigga went. That nigga quit. That nigga went right to basketball. <laughs> look, look, star NFL, point guard for varsity. I'm like, damn. The NFL stands for not for long. All right. <laughs> 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 a long career in the NFL is probably nine to ten years nowadays. That's a long Shit. career. Shit. That, 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 that's if you're yeah. lucky. Well, it depends on your position. If you're a front lineman, right. you're looking at like four to six, max. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, them dudes always, I mean, every play is active. A receiver mm -hmm. can get a couple plays. He's just doing a decoy, you know. But shit. Them niggas on the line, they, they shit they get rolled up under, getting pushed everywhere, getting blindsided. You don't know when it's going to be a wrap. I'm yeah, surprised man. more more of those guys don't get can fall on your leg, anything. What'd you say, bro? I'm surprised most of them don't get heart attacks on the field. Some of them are so you know they overweight, man. Fuck that. I don't care if you like six, man. seven, three fifty, man. You still overweight. That's still fucking. Put massive. one of them niggas in the in the eating league. Shit, they'll you know? destroy some shit. They'll probably yeah, out eat man. Gerald Miller and Amber Weeks. I don't want to see them niggas build where they go out to eat, man. I forgot who the quarterback was or who the rookie was, but they ran a tab on his ass, dog. Whew. They ran up like 30 grand. I was like, what the fuck were these niggas eating? Everything. Man, I got some built, I got some built refrigerator, built fucking industrial strength, built motherfucking football plays in my family, man. I'm motherfuckers eat, man. They'll eat you out of house and home, man. It's like having <laughs> a fucking horse. Dude, but who the fuck eat, got but horses eating grass and hey, you know what I'm saying? They get, you ain't got to come out your pocket. You let them eat the grass, yeah. nigga. What the fuck? What, what are you? you got 30, what are you eating? That's a car, nigga. Thirty thousand dollars? For real, bro? What the hell? And you still got to do that re up tomorrow, shit. 
Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, if I was the rookie, yeah, I'd have saw that man. bill. I was like, man, y'all motherfuckers can, y'all better come out your pocket. I'm gonna fuck if I'm a rookie That's or not. That's how they broke, yo. They, 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 they eat out all the time, and they getting them uh, lobsters and all this shit, and fucking all these big Angus steaks and shit, fucking $100 plates. Every yo, time. but hey, they man, did who? that shit to, they did that to a rookie, though. Hey, hey, it was hey, like you. a couple of linemen. They ate twenty, thirty thousand dollars worth of shit. I was like, I'd have left out of it. Went to the bathroom and went and it came back, nigga. Oh, that's Charles, man. You over there kicking it, kicking it with the crickets? Yeah, crickets in the background and shit. Oh, I'm up in the PA spot right now. Yeah, I'm out of wilderness right now. I'm chilling. Oh, okay. I'm like, what the fuck? I switched hey, it up. I ain't, Charles and Jimmy Cricket. Yeah. Charles yeah, and Jimmy Cricket kicking it back. I got to switch it up, man. My kids wanted to come up here. They wanted to go fishing. So they pass so like, going to the cricket and shit. So I'm out here, you know what I mean? Check out, check up on my little spot over here. <laughs> Box of Vanessa says Ariola with his big juggernaut typhoon nose. Yeah, his nose is huge, bro. Like he just got hit in the nose from age two all the way up to present day, consistently. This shit just permanently swole. Doesn't he break his nose in like every goddamn fight? This shit look permanently broke, so I, we don't even know. Nope. Hey, Adrian. Yeah. Boxman that says Ariola with the big uh juggernaut typhoon nose. That's another one that got that huge nose, bro. I don't know who nose is big. Well, his nose is bigger than um Smellerby. Guarantee. Uh, <laughs> he just got the his, he just got those fucking he just the got not, the he got the bigger nostrils. nostrils. Dog. He got the holes, yeah. dog. He got the dual he got the exhaust. <laughs> the, the, <laughs> he got the dual exhaust. That nigga got the back of a caddy. The, the, you got the flow master. The Z28. <laughs> shit. Ariola just so got I'm the... Saying, so shit. Ariola, Ariola got the boiler exhaust on his face, man. And, 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 and fucking Smellerby got the fucking big old semi-truck fucking, fucking stack exhaust and shit. <laughs> you know what I'm Breathing up all the air and shit, man. Them some, can't yeah, have them man. two niggas in the room. Yeah, wherever he live at, I'm sure the air is very thin, man. Exactly. You ever seen them redneck trucks with the big the, with the big smokestacks on the top of them and the big pickup redneck pickups, and then they blow out all that fucking uh fucking diesel smoke? That's yeah. Ellaby's Ellaby's nose, man. No, that's that nigga yeah. farts, bro. <laughs> nigga just burn off, man. No, but he blows every, uh, smoke everybody ass when he says Tank is gonna do this and that when he ain't having Tank fight nobody. Yeah, that's man. He just keeps saying he's a star. He's a superstar. That's his favorite shit to say. He the future. Box Finesse says, Miller disrespected AJ's mom more like he tried eating his mom. Good thing he got popped dirty. What? What the hell? Oh, he said he tried to, like, hungry. Try to eat his mom. Yeah, you made us think about it. He was like, whoa, hold up. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, clear that up. Clear that up, bro. But how was he disrespected? I I think he did say something about his mom, but I, I can't remember what was said. I know he was disrespectful with shit to Wilder. Boy, whoo. Yeah, about his uh, girl, his fiance, wasn't that? Yeah. Uh-huh. Talk about he was hitting it. Nigga sent to Wilder still, hey. she had the baby. I was like, ooh, killer. Hey, that's <laughs> still a, hey, that's still a good money fight. Like, even when he lose in the rematch, you know, Wilder that is against Fury. Wilder versus Jared Miller. That's still a good fight to, to watch in America. Miller. Miller will kill him. He will die. You think Miller would kill him? Would you? I'm telling you right now, Miller's fat. What well, we're assuming that he can come back after the juice, but if he comes back the same, he's just gonna push him backwards and lay on him. Wilder's too small. Wilder too small. Damn, that'll be the Wilder. biggest motherfucker Wilder fought. Wilder would sleep his ass. Yeah, Wilder got that crack though. I'm telling you, Wilder's only got time for one. Like, you got to watch how Miller fights. Miller just walks straight into people and puts them against the rope and then just keeps unloading on them. He and can't he, just walk into Wilder. He can't like just him. walk into Wilder, boy. That right there. I, 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 yeah, I think. I, to I, I think. And he ain't really, nobody. Like, see, Fury wasn't just really walking in. He was staying his way in. He was real awkward. But Jerry Miller ain't like that. Jerry Miller going to get, like, clipped or something, bro. Wilder probably. Nigga. You got and, and you got to think about it. he's shorter. Remember, so but, but Wilder lost to a tall, bigger dude. You know, even yeah. though what's the name is bigger than him, he's short though. He's not fucking Wilder gonna be able to deal with him with that jab. I, I got you, but what you gotta understand is Miller is three hundred and fifteen pounds at like six four with a yeah. neck that's the size of a waist. 
So that right there means he's going to get four punches. Damn, bro. He said his neck size of a waist. Get that waist neck. Damn, that's fucked up. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, I'm just saying that'll be a, uh, yeah, that fight a sell, though, right? Wilder versus Miller. I think it would because, you know. Yeah, because they really like don't like said, each other. Miller already said he busted his girl, and I believe Miller. That fight got to happen. He fought Brazil, so, hey, that's still beef. You got to fight Miller. I love to see yeah, that. They genuinely don't like each other. That shit would sell. I want to see that fight. So, hey, Wilder, you know, don't, don't, don't feel too bad about the third fight, man. Look, it's still a big, big money fight out there for you. I think a lot of people are going to buy into that one. We have the former PED, you know, the guy who did the most PEDs in history going against the guy, the former WBC champion who got dethroned by Gypsy King. Let's get on! Bring those lines. <laughs> You know what, though? Like, I'm just defense, though. I'm not convinced he's that bad. I, I, it, It's hard to say because, you know, Fury, I just think, is the best guy out there. Oh, outside Wilder's, of Wilder's right. pretty bad, buddy. He's pretty bad. He got to get that shit together. Wait, wait, though. Wait, though. He's bad technically, but when he lands that punch, he wins. That's the punch, though. Yeah, he got a great – I mean, he got great power. We're not talking right, about that. But, but here's, skills, my question. He here's my trash. question, though. Outside of Fury, who's going to be able to evade that punch? You said who's able to evade that punch? Yeah, like AJ. Uh, obviously, say, obviously, you think no, Miller can. No, 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 no. What I'm saying, though, is I think Miller will beat him. I think Dillian White will beat him. But my point is this. So far, every guy that's been shorter than Wilder has walked into that punch. Fury's mm -hmm. very mobile. Very long, longer than Wilder, so and he's got more reach, so he can stay away from the right hand. The other guy's you're making got my point. <laughs> you're making my earlier point, but yeah, I hear you. No, I know what you're saying with Miller. The the earlier point, I just think Miller too big. I think he weighs too much. Yeah, but I think uh, aside from that, um, Tom, my thing is, yeah, we all seen that Wilder can connect on Fury, but Wild, you know, and, 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 and whatever about the count. Fury got up and then he came back on him. And the question always was, was, yeah, you know, he does have that knockout power, but when he does get people hurt, he wilds out, he, he windmills, he does, he's not a good closer, you know. So right, right. I agree with you, but that, that that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, and we've always said that Wilder has no technical skill, that's obvious, but Everybody is basing him off of the best heavyweight, might be the best heavyweight in years since it, since Lewis. I, this might be the best heavyweight that he got beat by. So what I'm saying is we as bad as Wilder is, he always finds a way to land that punch on lesser skilled fighters. When you put him in there with an AJ who's not as mobile, is he going to connect? If he does connect, can AJ take that punch? See, all the skills in the yeah. world don't account for shit if you can't take the punch. But it, mm -hmm. but AJ, here's the thing with AJ, right? We already know, we've already seen him going through, go through adversity. We've He's seen going through him. hell, man. He went through hell with, with the Ruiz fight. And he, he gave the Hey, hold up. No, no. Hey, 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 AJ, real quick. Start from, he went through hell with the Klitschko shit, too. Yeah, and, and and persevered. But go ahead. Perse and persevered. You know what I mean. And, and and the thing, the thing about it is that right, Wilder has that crushing power. But then again, we've already seen AJ take crushing, sustained power. You know what I mean. It's it, it's one thing to have a crushing power to take crushing power in one shot and get back up. But AJ has faced adversity through crushing sustained power you know and that's what ruiz gave him that night and he kept getting up and technically he he, he was out on his feet you know on his feet. and, and yeah. the ref stopped the fight right where is where is where is uh brazil right take fences brazil he got annihilated the first round he ended up getting up the man ended up getting up you know his wherewithals wasn't there but he got up you know, was the fight, uh, was there a 10 count? I don't re remember there being a 10 count. It was pretty much flatline, right? But the guy did get up within, if the ref would have counted, he probably would have got up in like 12 seconds or 15 seconds or more. <laughs> right? But thing is, thing is, my thing is, AJ, we already can know that AJ can face adversity and face hellacious power. The thing okay. is, you know, 
the thing, the real question is, is can Wilder finish the job after he does land and so, then that's just, a good question. Give me yeah. out. Yeah. Give me and out. Put together a combination, educated, uh, educated combination to finish AJ off if he does catch it. Yeah. Okay. So, so hear me out real fast, okay? That now you're gonna all three of y'all are gonna disagree with me right here about AJ. I know it's coming, but when I saw it. I seen something completely different. I didn't see him going through adversity and overcoming. In both fights, I saw him, we'll go with Klitschko first, because it was no different than Ruiz's fight. The only difference was Klitschko was in his 40s, hadn't fought for two years. Uh, let, let, me, that. Come on, come on, that. Back. let me finish. Was coming off of a loss to Tyson Fury when he went in there with AJ. He hurt AJ. When AJ was hurt, Klitschko was teeing off on him, and AJ was putting up zero offense. Klitschko ran out of energy, and that's when AJ came back. He didn't come back in the heat of battle. When he was losing to Ruiz in the first one, he didn't come back in the heat of battle. He just got battered. He wasn't so fighting AJ, back. He right, wasn't I, I, got, I got next. So. Wait, 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 hold on, Tone. AJ on, didn't catch him, him, no. him with a hellacious uppercut. You cut me off. Let me talk a little bit because you be cutting me off a little bit. Let me talk, my friend. AJ caught him with a hellacious uppercut. After that, the, the fight was done. There was no, it should have been stopped after that uppercut. He was done after that. But the, 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 the thing is, AJ closed the show. He put up an educated combination to where Klitschko could no longer uh, smartly defend himself in those educated combinations that AJ was throwing. And that's not me trying to fucking uh, be a fucking AJ man fan or nothing like that. That's what that, that's happened. Yeah, that's true. And, and you know what? And what you right. said, Tony Reviews, was the fact that, um, I mean, we've seen that AJ, he took, even though he went down or whatnot, and you said that he wasn't defending well, he took all of those punches and still got the job done. So he was able to uh, go through hell, you know, all that power. He, he took He took all the punches, whether you want to say the dude was old or not, but he weathered the storm and he got the job done. And then also, like I say, credit to AJ is the fact that this guy – He's already faced adversity. So going into, like, say, like a fight with Wilder, that is a good question. Is is Wilder going to be able to put up a good, educated combination together to to finish off AJ uh, like like AJ was saying? Because he does get wild, man. And if somebody can get up, can he finish them off? Like, you know, that's that's still remain to be. I want, I want, you know. Okay, so let me respond to Angel real fast. So, yes, he caught him with the uppercut. When did he catch him with an uppercut? Uh, uh, two rounds later, after he got floored and he was getting the shit beat out of him for an entire round, he was getting the shit beat out of him for half a round before he caught Klitschko with the uppercut after Klitschko had blown off all his steam. Yes, he survived. You're missing, you're missing my point. My point is when Klitschko was teeing off on AJ after he had him hurt, AJ put up zero offense. When Ruiz had him hurt in the first pop, fight aj put up zero offense so my point is this he had his hands down? But, but listen listen if wilder hurts aj and aj puts up zero offense he will go to sleep because wilder throws everything at you when he hurts you he throws all caution to the wind and if you sit there like a punching bag with your guard up he's going to knock him out with ease that's the issue with aj he does not fight when he's hurt so he had his guard completely down. That's what you're saying, Tony. Man. Well, he, he went down. from he went from Gerald Miller to beat AJ, B Wilder, right? You first, that's the first thing you said, and then now you feel like Wilder could beat beat AJ, or or I guess AJ can't deal with with Wilder or something like that. No, so, no, no. And then and then I think you criticize his in a, you know his lack of skills as well, and we're talking about a guy who is skilled in AJ. Guy who has dealt with adversity, he's shown he could take a punch uh, and and get up and and still fight. You know, I don't know. I feel like you kind of discredit in the fact that this guy is he he's not. You got to really really put him away. You know what I mean? Like this this guy is not going to just be in there to just get stepped on. Okay, I mean? like, so, so I'm not trying to discredit AJ. What I'm saying is, let me clarify. AJ by far is the much more skilled fighter than Wilder. There's no question to that. What I'm saying, though, is with them two fighting each other, 
AJ is much slower than Wilder. He's shorter than Wilder and his reach is much less than Wilder. So he has to come to Wilder. When he's coming to Wilder, he can't do like AJ can't move like Fury, right? So even though Wilder is technically bad, he still, if he hits you. You mean like the herky jerky shit or what? Because yeah, yeah, he, he doesn't he he doesn't okay, have a lot of in and out. He doesn't have a lot of bobbing and weaving. He's very yeah. straight up and down with how he attacks. So that's perfect for somebody. Well, we've seen that for the majority of his his fights, but we've seen a different AJ in his last fight. Yeah, but look at AJ in his last fight. He dropped weight. He went down to two forty five, right? Mm -hmm. And whenever he was fighting Ruiz in that second fight, he couldn't even knock the sweat off of Ruiz's face. What are you talking about? He knocked the goddamn ketchup out of his eye. What was you talking about? Nah, not in that second fight. In that second fight, Ruiz was just he he was too slow to catch AJ. AJ didn't he split? Fight. Didn't he cut? Didn't he cut Ruiz in the second fight? Yeah, he cut him real bad and dazed him. He was Ruiz. He's what you talking about? Oh, you just said he ain't knocked the sweat off. What you mean? He kept countering and stopping him. AJ kept stopping him with his stiff jab. Ruiz couldn't do shit. How many times? How many times? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Listen to me. Um, if, if Ruiz um, was hurt that bad he, by a punch, like, how I'm many times um, did Ruiz put his hands he, down? How he, much times did he um, wave AJ forward with no guard? So like, now AJ ain't got power? Or what's, what the fuck? See, y'all yeah, keep, keep jumping in and I can't even finish. AJ does have power if he's in his 250s. But what we've seen from AJ is the lighter he gets, he doesn't mm -hmm. have natural god gifted knockout power say like wilder does aj relies on his strength on his power from size so you take oh, his size away mm, i just think that that was just a game plan man i feel like aj came in with a game plan he's not going to trade with ruiz because that's the wrong style that ain't the guy you want to be trading with so you had to just be smart he had to be smart in there but that don't mean that you know he didn't have the power in, in that in that second fight like i think the power was there but he just fought smart. He fought smart. He didn't take unnecessary risk in there, unnecessary chances when you outboxing him clean, easy. And then everybody was talking about how he came box. He's super robotic. And all he did was just checkmate a lot of y'all. He did because he showed everything that people said he couldn't do. Everybody knew he could knock out people. We've seen that every fight down there. Him and Wilder was like neck and neck as far as KO percentage. Yo, I remember we talked about it too on here. We talked about it. Um, we had a whole big panel. On was on here. We was like, I was like, yo, he's gonna AJ is gonna box him, man. Like he used to do in the Olympics, and you know, before all his all, all the way up to them to the uh when he first uh won the championship, you know, before before that he used to box really good. And then you know, he came up, you know, with this big shit, you know, trying to be like 240 plus with all this fucking bodybuilder shit and you know, fucked up his stamina. That's what it, what, it what it fucked him up. You know what I mean? Nobody ever questioned if AJ had hard or, or, or if he could take a punch. Come on, man. Dillian White during their fights, man, fucking crushed AJ a couple times, man. Hit him with some devastating shots and AJ, you know, got yeah. up and ate the man. So, yeah, I mean, it is what it is, you know, but I see where, I see what you, where you coming from, Tony. Yeah, you got your opinion, but I just, we just counted with certain things we've seen from AJ in um, previous fights. I mean, the guy got power. I just saw that that was a different game plan in the second fight with Ruiz. And um, it wasn't about using power. So it was all about being, using your, your movement, being elusive, being in shape, being smart. That's what I saw. Okay. Uh, what, so, so let me clarify power. Okay. In, in anything that you do, right, whether it's fighting, weightlifting, et cetera, there's two different forms of power. One is power through natural God given. Don't know where it comes from, but you've got guys who say are 135 pounds that can bench 315. You got guys that are 147s like Manny Pacquiao that can hit like a 200 pound man. You don't know where that power comes from. It's God given. There is no answer through science that we know of to explain why these people are so powerful for as small as they are. That's God given. The second form of power is trained power that you get through building strength. You gain through get, getting bigger. What I'm saying is AJ has power, but his power is brought to him by his size. When you take AJ's size away, he doesn't look to have the same type of power. His mm -hmm. is a built power. It's not a God given power. It's different. Let me, let me ask you a question. What relevance would power even play if he just outboxed the shit out of Wilder? 
You know what I mean? Just go in there, be elusive, be smart. I'll box the shit out of them because that's a very possible, that's a strong possibility. Right, right. I'm, I'm not questioning that. I'm not, you, you're missing my point here about Wilder, okay? I'm not questioning if AJ can outbox him because I believe he can. I'm not questioning any of that. I'm not questioning does AJ move better? Does he put punches together better? Can he combo better? What I'm questioning is AJ. Is resistance or? No, no, I'm questioning himself. I'm questioning AJ because when he gets hit, if he gets hit and he gets hurt, he does the same thing every time he ever okay, gets so, hurt. Okay, so okay, so let's flip yeah. it real quick because you've been you've been really, you know, kind of cooking on AJ. So flip it. What about when Wilder gets hurt? What about him? Because we acting like he's not gonna get hit. Because who got the better defense out of them two? AJ by far. Okay, so being that he he has the ability to evade punches better than Wilder, we know Wilder gets hit. So let's just say Wilder gets hit. How do you rate his recovery? Um, I rate Wilder's chin. How many times have we seen Wilder in trouble? I'm about to ask. So that we can judge and say we. You had all this criticism about uh, you question AJ and his ability to you know to maybe recover or take the power or whatnot. What about Wilder? Because we seen what happened in this last fight. Yeah, yeah, I'll answer that. So it, it's not just the last fight. It was against Ortiz twice. And it's happened before when he's been stunned in past fights. So Wilder, what you can get from Wilder when he's hurt is Wilder's got a great chin because he has zero defense when he's hurt. He just takes punches, but he doesn't seem to go down. He's got a lot of heart because he continues to try to fight. However, with that being said, he has zero defense. He has zero movement. He has zero clue what to do when he's hurt. He doesn't know when to grab. He doesn't know when to get out the way. So, again, he just sits there and ends up taking the damage. My point is, but but he does try to get off shots while he's hurt. I'll give him that. Even when the towel was thrown in in his last fight against Fury, he was in the midst of throwing a right hand as the towel came across. So he was still trying to throw an offense. What I'm saying, though, is somebody like Wilder, okay, it's bad when you shell up. So if AJ gets caught, it's the million dollar question. Can AJ even get caught? Will he even get caught? I don't know. My thing is this. If Wilder hits AJ and hurts him, what we know from several accounts now that when AJ gets hurt, he shells up and does nothing but shell up. If he shows up against Wilder, he will get beat. He will get knocked out because Wilder will just onslaught him with windmills. That's all he'll do because that's what he always does. He windmills the fuck out of you when you're hurt. That's my one concern with AJ against Wilder. Well, what I'm looking at, I see one guy who has more experience with being hurt and, and knowing what to do. And another guy who has maybe less experience with being like, you know, super hurt. And uh, I just see one guy responding way worse when, he, when he's hurt. And like you said, he, he don't know what to do. And, um, you know, so, I mean, hey, this is a guy who don't even really know what to do when he get hurt. The dude had no answer when he got, got hurt by Fury. It was no, over with. I agree a thousand percent with you. And I'm not saying that this, this is, is a guy who, who's skilled. So, but, but I'm saying. To me, this isn't a question of what Wilder does when Wilder gets hurt. It's not a question of how good of a boxer Wilder is because he's not. It's not a question of any of that. My I give him a very slim chance to beat AJ. Very slim at this point. But power ain't going to get it done. My only question is, if Wilder hits AJ and hurts him, what is AJ going to do? Because if AJ shells up like he's prone to do, he will lose. That I'm telling you right now. If you see AJ get caught if they ever fight and he shells up, that will be the end of the fight. I promise you. You can mark my words today. I'm not saying Wilder will be able to hurt AJ, but I'm telling you, if he hurts him and AJ shells up, he will get knocked the fuck out soon after. Um, so I'll tell you about it. He got a rematch ahead of him, so... Shit, it don't matter. This shit is fantasy talk. Wilder versus AJ. He had that opportunity. So this is what happens when you marinate too long. You know what I mean? Yeah, he, did, he didn't want to fight it when he had the chance. I, I I admit that. Wilder did not want no parts of AJ. So, yeah, we're talking about somebody who, uh, you know, he basically uh, missed out on the biggest opportunity. You know, he was about that undisputed work at first, and then he switched up. So, hey. This is what he gets. I mean, he, he, this is what happens when you don't um, pursue greatness, man. 
And you just said it was all about the money. So just it, can it I, is what can it I is. Can I throw this out there? It's a 95% chance that AJ beats Wilder. Don't think I'm saying that AJ is going to lose. Man, you, you tripping, dog. <laughs> What's up with you, man? No, <laughs> you I'm did all of this, made all of this argument for Wilder. Now AJ has a 95% chance. No, because you're missing my point. I, I think that it's getting lost in what I'm saying. Like, I'm not trying to make yeah, it out like I'm going to win the fight. I have one concern. That's it. Only one. And it comes to what AJ does when he's hurt. And it comes down to when he's hurt, how aggressive Wilder Grit gets when he hurts somebody. That's it. I don't, I would not put my money on Wilder in that fight, but I'm just saying if he gets hurt, that's the one worry because he shells up. Hey, uh, Hypno Fist in the chat say if Fury, who has a lower KO percentage, was able to drop Wilder several times, then what is going to happen when he gets caught by AJ? I'm going to go sleep. You know what I mean? This is a guy yeah. who's uh, more power. Um, he, he's not hes not a bum in there. That motherfucker got skills. He know how to move. He can counter you. He can throw hellacious combinations. A lot of people be kind of hating on AJ or sleeping on this dude. Like like he just some slot. This motherfucker is too tiny. So I'm going to give him his respect in that fucking ring. That nigga ain't no bitch. AJ ain't no bitch. So I'm not saying Wilder bitch either, but uh, he better deal with that uh, that giant that he got to deal with. Fury, shit. Say so he ain't ready for no AJ work. You know, AJ is in a very, very comfortable spot. You know, hey, he got a loss. Wilder got a loss. You know, the only difference is AJ got straps. Wilder don't. Let, let me ask you a, a a question, a real question, because this comes down to how bad Tyson Fury beat um, Wilder, right? Here's my question: Do you think in a million years Fury would ever lose to Ruiz? Do I think Fury would lose to Ruiz? Um, I think Ruiz will have a, sh a chance. I think I think Dylan White has a chance. I think uh, Ruiz has a chance versus Styles make fights, man. And and um, you know Wilder ain't that ain't that great, man. He's not that no, skilled. No, no, no. I'm not talking about Wilder. I'm talking about Fury's greatness. I know that, but but I'm, I mean I'm just telling you, like I'm making my point that. I don't really give Fury that much big, you know, props. He beat Wilder, but, you know, I, I'm not saying that he can't be beat. I think AJ got a good chance to beat him. Ruiz, Dylan White, but I think he got Wilder's number. That's that's what I think on that. But, yeah, he can get – there's a good chance he might lose to, to Ruiz. Ruiz is – even though he's fat, the motherfucker can fight. He can fight. He got them hands. Uh, shit, AJ had to get on his bicycle. You know what I mean? So, you know. Only thing you can hope is that uh they got hella food around him, so that you got a better chance that tonight really get caught, you know, and he can be slower, you know, in, in the in the um fight that you got with him because Ruiz will probably fuck up Wilder, bad, you know what I mean? Right. So all right, look, all right, look, you know, you're gonna think I'm trolling, all right, when I say this. You have all been right. all weekend, so go ahead. Everybody gonna think I'm trolling. Everybody gonna think I'm trolling when I say this, but. I think Joseph Parker might give Tyson Fury problems. He might. Yeah, he might. That's what I'm saying. He might. It ain't like we've seen Tyson Fury fight a whole bunch of top dudes. Going back in the bushes now. <laughs> Y'all talk. Right? It ain't like we didn't see him fight a whole uh, – it's a lot of names we ain't seen Fury fight. You know, he, did, he did just get back, you know. In my a relevant dudes, and then he fought Wilder. That's it. In my opinion, there's only two people that stand a chance against Fury, and that's AJ and Dillian White. And it, it, Ruiz stands zero chance, in my opinion, against <laughs> Fury because it's easily like think well, about. I get a fat dude a chance. Man. No, 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 yeah, no, no. Go ahead, go ahead. My point. My point is this: think about how easily AJ danced around him. Now AJ's shorter than Fury. He's nowhere near as long as Fury, and he's a hell of a lot slower than Fury. So if you can't catch a guy who's shorter, slower you're not going to catch a guy who's taller and faster. It's just not going to happen. <laughs> Man, let me see what y'all talking about. He says, you think AJ would have struggled versus Otto Wallen? <laughs> yeah, he said you can't use that triangle method stuff. Check the IBT in the chat. Uh, Let's 
He said he lost to John McDermott and then got robbed on the cards. I didn't see that fight. You know. Uh, Box Finesse says Ruiz is a pressure fighter. He has a very chance to be very good chance to be Fury. Fury don't like pressure fighters. Let's keep it real. Fury lost to Ottawa. I mean, bro, like I said, I give Ruiz a chance to be Fury. I'm not saying he is, but I'm not counting him out. I don't think it's like 95% to five, like how you said with AJ and Wilder, uh, Tony Reviews. I give Wilder more of a chance than 5%. You know what I mean? I just feel like uh, AJ has all the advantages, but all Wilder got is a puncher's chance. That's it. So I can't pick him for that. You know what I mean? He might get lucky, though. But um, look, yeah, he is a pressure fighter, though. So styles make fights, man. You know, Fury beat Wilder, he gets credit, but it wasn't like Wilder posed that big of a threat except for a right hand. Let's just be real. That was it. All you had to do was just not get knocked out by the right hand and the fight is won. Anybody, that was anybody game plan. Just don't get hit by the right hand and you will beat this nigga. I mean, everybody was having their way with Wilder pretty much, which was a I, serious problem. No, I, I agree a thousand percent with you right there that all you got to do is avoid the right hand. But even after Fury got hit by the right hand in the first fight, what did Fury do? Did Fury shell up or did Fury go right back to the attack? He went back to his game plan. Yeah. You're talking about in, in, in the 12th round, he just he jumped right back on him. He knew it was the urgency. Like, damn, this motherfucker just put me down and, you know, shit, I'm still alive. So let me whip his ass. Right. But, <laughs> you know, but as far as, um, yeah, it's just all about the game plans, man, styles and the game plan, you know. I felt, uh, you know, I don't know what game plan AJ had in that first fight versus Ruiz. I just think he was nervous, man. He was not. He, he was not there. His mentally, emotionally, he was not there. You know, he lost, but hey, it just I didn't see what the the game plan was not great. And then you, you know, switching from Gerald Miller preparing for him to Ruiz, I just felt like it was just all wrong. You know, but we see what happened in the second fight. So it's just all about having the right game plan too. You can have more skills than somebody. You get in there with the wrong game plan and just lose. So just um, lose. to Box and Finesse, um, blah, 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 blah. he said something about the gas should have stopped the fight. Incorrect. In boxing, the only time you stop because of a cut is whenever that cut inhibits you from seeing. That's why it's so scary to get a cut over your eye because if they rule that that blood is going into your eye and you're blinded by it, that's when they call the fight. How bad the gash looks has nothing to do with anything. It's got to do with it impeding your vision. Uh, hematobin can, like, if you get a big lump on your face that causes your eyebrow to swell down over your eye, that can also cause a TKO because you can't see. How bad it looks has nothing to do with it. It's only got to do with it impeding your vision. So, no, the fight should not have been stopped. It, it wasn't nowhere near blinding him. Yeah. All right, man. There you go. Turn reviews. Who was you? Who was you addressing? Oh, addressing for this. Addressing for this. No box for this. Um, I'm trying to find the comment. That's why. You know, the doctors. The doctors go by that criteria, and they have to ask the fighter. You know, because it's up to the ability, the fighter's functionality. When the doctor asks the question, and the boxer demonstrate the functionality of, you know, the question that he asked the fighter. So if he cannot, if if the fighter cannot display that functionality, the doctor will stop the fight. Yeah. Unless, so unless the corner team feels that they need to stop it because they want to stop the bleeding or that they cannot stop the bleeding, and they don't want the, the based injury. Based on what Tony said, based on what Tony said, though, shit, Floyd probably almost got almost uh, could have made his own self lose and shit. I remember when he fought uh Madonna and he got cut. He was in the corner like I can't see. Yeah, yeah. Then the doctor didn't hear the shit. Damn. Yeah, if they, if, if they hear a fighter say that, they can definitely TKO it right there. Or <laughs> My daughter should have been like, "Look, man, he said it on camera. He couldn't see." Hey, had, that, that, had that been the New York State uh, Athletic Commission, the fight had been stopped once once Floyd said that. Yeah, he said that shit on camera. I can't see. He said it to Roger. <clears throat> well, who's who was training him? No, no, uh, senior. My man's dead. I can't see. But yeah, so that's dead. that's why. That's why. 99% of the time fights get stopped because of a cut over the eye to your eyebrow is because of your vision being impaired and they don't want you to take excessive right. damage because you can't see to protect yourself. That makes sense, man. Yeah. Well, Floyd, you got you got off of one, man. That Madonna fight. Shit. Get your eye fucked up. 
Yeah. Well, hey, episode 11, man, of the Flame Series. We had to get some in. We did episode 10 yesterday. Mm-hmm. And uh, I don't know if you, Tony Reviews, if you have anybody um, you want to get that Flame of Fame to or Shame. So I want to give a, a Flame of Fame to AJ um, just because he spoke out on the whole George Floyd thing at the same time that Deontay Wilder did. And AJ is not even from America. So the fact that he spoke out on it says even more. Uh, my flame of shame is going to go to DSFG or J- <laughs> JFL, not because he got extremely beat and battered in our live debate, not because every single person in the chat voted for me over him. He didn't get one vote for winning the debate, but because he came to my channel trolling that he won the debate, even though he lost. So he got knocked out so bad, he envisioned a whole nother debate in his head. That's my flame of shame. Okay. All right. I'm going to get it, get it, do some promo. All right. Well, he might be in the bushes, so he might want to rematch or whatnot. But, uh, all right. Uh, actual facts, Andrew, did you get one? Oh, uh, shame. No, nah, man. I don't, got, I don't got nothing for today, man. Okay. Seems like that's about it for today, man. Uh, I appreciate everybody in the live live chat today. Appreciate everybody in the playback. Y'all go check out Tony's reviews. Uh, of, as always, my brother Angel Santos is always here. You know, this is this is his home. Um, he inspired it. Matter of fact, he gave us a new idea yesterday. We got the flame of uh, inspiration coming soon. So that's going to be a different, different one coming. But uh, mm-hmm. brought to yours truly by Actual Facts. So that one is coming as well. So. Got a long week ahead, and uh, we'll be trying to get some hours racked in so that you guys can have something to, uh, you know, listen to while y'all working and doing what y'all do, whoever rocks with us. So uh, more content to come. And um, once again, my flame of fame, of course, went to Eddie Hearn. Keep doing what you can do. Um, he's done a tremendous amount of great great things in the sport of boxing um, and a lot of fighters' careers, you know, giving them opportunities. Um, I mean, we ain't got a name on it. Don't matter who it is. Devin Haney, Mike Garcia, Jesse Vargas, uh, YouTube niggas, anybody. You know, Eddie Hearn is just giving people opportunities to just eat. You know what I mean? So shout out to the ones that's creating opportunities for other people to eat. Big salute to y'all. You know what I mean? Um, no doubt, Tony, thank you for coming through. Y'all check out his content. And um, yeah. yeah, man. Shout out to Tony, man, for coming through, man. It's always uh Good to have Tone come in here and, you know, bring a bit of different perspective and his views and stuff and give his channel a, a, a view. And if you ain't subscribed, man, sub to this shit, man. Real deal. So we already got to stay on our promotion stuff, man. It ain't just about one person. It's about a uh, community, man. So y'all go support him. Also, Sporting Advantage. Thank you, brother. And Finesse. Box Finesse. Go support his channel as well. You know, I like the fact that uh, a lot of my subscribers – you know, they got content, too, so it's good. You know, whenever I see him, I try to refer y'all there. So, Boxing Finesse, check him out. Hit his thumb, his thumbnail and subscribe to him. Hit that bell with it. And Sporting Advantage. He is part of this UTC click. And um, y'all go support him as well. Get on the wave early, you know. So, thank you, Sporting Advantage. Um, no Name Rose earlier in the chat. I think Lisa was uh, busy today, so I didn't see her. We had HypnoFist come through. Martin Ramos, Hawker Mustang, Red Glove, my brother RGM. He was probably busy today. Uh, Charles, who was on the panel. Um, the homie one two kid. I mean, everybody that um supports this movement. You know, we're not a big community, but we solid though, and we real. So until the next one, man. Episode twelve coming soon. Y'all have a beautiful weekend and um, great week going forward. Peace. Yeah.